everyone, and I will present the joint work of uh, Renata Dividino, Gerd Gröner, Matthias Tim, and myself. It's about ranking RDF with provenance via preference aggregation. And uh, as a short introduction and motivation, I like to give you uh, a short example. Uh, the general problem is that uh, a large number of applications generates actually data streams or, or results for queries. So it's all about query results. And from time to time, or if you are looking at provenance data, these, these data objects are uh, attached with additional data for trust, for, for, as he said, actuality or things like this. And the question we posed is, if we got such a scenario, which is our example data set, you got uh, on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side, uh, you got RDF statements, and then you got several yeah, Providence data items attached to the, to the statement. And uh, against such a data source, I can pose a query like that, for example. So give me all cinemas which play action films, actually. And I'm asking that to different web sources, like here you can see City Guide, Movie Today, or uh, Deerfield Cinema, which are yeah, artificial, let's say, information sites about cinema programs. And I am uh, get a value for, for the actuality of the data and for the trust of the data, for example. And uh, what can I do now is I, I want to rank my results. So I want to present. Uh, the, the guy who, who posted this query, uh, a proper ranking of the results. Actually, I can do that for each of these uh, Providence data items independently, so I can rank them by degree of truth, by actuality, or by trustworthiness of the source, but which is actually not what I wanted to do. In some way, I wanted to combine all these three uh, Providence values to be able to yeah, build up an aggregated ranking for, for my results. And uh, we posed the question how to do that and how to do that in a, in a fair and a correct way such that I got certain guarantees in the way I combine these uh, different values. And uh, one of the ideas was, uh, to, as I said, to, to result a ranking that, that combines these. I can just do it by, by combining them in an arbitrary way, but then I have no guarantees that my function will, will generate a good and uh, yeah, a result of a decent quality. And uh, for that, we looked into uh, social sh choice theory, which is part of economics, and which in general deals about voting systems. And from this theory, we got plenty different kinds of uh, voting systems you can actually use, and all these systems have uh, decent mathematical qualities that they guarantee. They guarantee a fairness, they guarantee that certain values or certain voters can't uh, yeah, corrupt the vote by voting with a decent strategy, so it's not possible to, to um, influence ranking by using certain kinds of providence uh, uh, data values which you attach to your, your source, for example. And we investigated different of these uh, social ch choice theories, so preference aggregation functions, according to uh, their use for, for ranking of RDF query results. And um, for that, you got, first of all, the social welfare function, uh, which has as I said, quality guarantees for, for the final ranking. And uh, we evaluated actually three of them in the paper, and more are under current evaluation. The first is this lexicographical. Uh, everyone can imagine it's like a telephone book. So you always have one of these uh, problems values, like in our example, for example, the date, which is the first. So first of all, we will rank by date, then by trust, and then maybe by, by data source or something like this. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple, uh, and you have certain yeah, guarantees and disadvantages like, for example, you have a dominating, let's say, providence dimension. Others are, for example, maybe you know them, uh, the border rule. The border rule is actually 
uh, a voting system where you yeah, attach scores to your vote. So um, you will get a vote, vote for these people and give them scores. This is my first choice, this is my second choice and third choice. And I can do this exactly in the same for the different providence aggregation or providence uh, uh, dimensions. As I say, I take every single dimension, let's say again, the date uh, of the information or the actuality date of the information and, and giving scores. The most actual will get the highest score and the, the, the oldest information will get the lowest score. And I do that for all of the other dimensions I, I I have and finally I aggregate all these scores and I get a ranking for that. You can see this there for our query results R1, R2 and R3 and as you can see time is uh, evaluated in that way so I think in this case R3 is the most actual result and R2 in this case is the, the oldest results. I do the same thing for source and trust and finally I get final scores and these scores I can use to rank. So my first result in this case would be the, the, the first query result R1, then R3 and then R2 finally. Uh, one other possible rule might be, uh, here you can see it again with the query results, so <laughs> that I don't tell anything that's not right. And uh, another is the plurality rule there. I also do this, um, these, these rankings, but then I elected them, uh, or elect the candidate which was ranked the first the most time, and then the second the most time, and the first the most time. And as you can see, uh, I get different, a different ranking finally. So what we do in the paper is actually we give a mathematical uh, foundation for these rankings and we apply it, or first of all for, for ranking of RDF data, and they apply these different uh, ranking methods to, to these mathematical foundation and found them quite good. And, uh, and <coughs> the next step was the evaluation for a whole data set. We're actually doing this is ongoing work and uh, afterwards we like to do it for, for streaming data and for the top K case and see how we can apply these different methods, for example, to, to state-of-the-art top K algorithms for, for top K query evaluation. And um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I got this. Am I in time? Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm a little bit short, but uh, it's not my main work. I was caring about the streaming approach, which is actually not in the paper and will be in some of our next <laughs> publications. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, I, I got these. Um, uh, for example, this is my data set, and I got these different scores. Yeah, and this this example they are artificial, but we are actually using uh, for our evaluation parts of the billion triple data set, uh, billion triple challenge. Uh, the billion triple challenge has the the source information attached to the triple. Yeah, and uh, we. For example, what we did for some sources, we, we queried the source and take the response time, for example, as an additional providence uh, um, dimension. Yeah? And we attached by hand for our ev evaluation different trust values. It's a yeah, valid question because out there, there's not so much data with really multiple dimensional uh, providence data. But if you imagine in the future of the semantic web, we, we want to have this data. We want to have data about the source trust, uh, the time, the point in time where the triple was uh, presented. We did an additional evaluation we are preparing now, for example, with DBpedia, and we used the, the editing date of Wikipedia actually also as one of the providence in uh, dimensions. Uh, does that answer your question? Or? Okay, so, the, 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 um, so you don't... Uh, so that set was given manually for this particular set of data. 
But you do not assume that you get it. I mean... No, we don't assume. Uh, because uh, actually, you're completely right. There are not so many data setters out there which provide our such amount of, of, of provenance information. That's a minus just a terminological quibble. Yeah. Uh, is your title really right? I mean, is this really provenance information? Uh, this uh, is a valid point, and we discussed that because uh, in the database community, as we know, provenance is uh, also understood different. But uh, in some, it's, it's a little bit a point of view. You got uh, valid, let's say, reference papers there where they call such data provenance, and others they call it differently. Uh, we really discussed that, and finally, I was against providence, but the rest was. <laughs> In a way, you're limiting yourself. Yeah, think, you're right. It's just for the arbitrary ranking of these triples. It's combining arbitrary rankings, but whether the triples. You could. Yeah. Confidence or whatever magic source is. Yeah, yeah. Your approach is completely general. Yeah. Yeah, it's also not only for RDF, you can use it for everything. Yeah, it's just about getting a mathematical model and getting this mathematical model of social choice and combining them to see how it works. Sorry, it wasn't very yeah. No, it's, it's completely valid. You're right. Any other question? I have one. Uh, you mentioned that there is a you are considering a new additional criterion and yeah. you are considering to put them together. But uh, even if you have a baseline, so that is a, a, a ranking that you already know that there exists, for example, that ranking would be grounded on a different or a, a different criteria or maybe a subset of the of, of the criterion that you have that you have used. So I'm curious, how do you show, how do you prove at the end that your approach that I, I, I found interesting, but uh, it would be hard to, uh, unless you have a, a, a very good way for show showing, how do you, do you prove that you are able to improve the results? Yeah, I think when you look at ranking, the most obvious way to, to evaluate is user confidence. But this approach doesn't take user confidence into account at all, because uh, it's not a learning approach or something like this. It's more or less about how we can combine these, these metadata values, I won't call them provenance anymore, um, in, a, in a way that is proven to guarantee a quality of result under the chosen mechan mechanism. How do you show that uh, you are guaranteeing the quality of the results? Because, uh, so uh, it is completely uh, clear the new approach, the rationale, I like it, uh, I, I agree with you, but uh, I, I'm afraid, so I'm asking maybe myself, uh, how do you formally prove, let's say, experimentally, that you are able to improve the results? So you, basically, you don't have a baseline, and then yeah. if you have a baseline, that baseline is grounded on a different uh, <laughs> criterion. So how do you have in mind to prove uh, the validity of the results? Experimentally, I mean. Yeah, experimentally, it's, it's difficult because you can prove it mathematically because they, they got these decent qualities. You are completely right. But uh, really, an experimental proof is, I think, mm, we have to, to, to take user confidence in account I in some way. Yeah? It, it, I knew it doesn't really answer your qu question, but uh, this was also an ongoing discussion because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do your next work. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.